Uh, I don't think I think I have my music turned down really low. Well, it should have started. Oh, I think I can hear. Yeah, the... it started. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can hear the button. Okay, excellent. All right. Well, welcome to my clinic. Uh, for those of you watching the review or the the vod rather, this is going to be a review on my game of uh, Alter Divide. It's going to be a five v five. Notably, X Factor's in this game. He's a pretty good player. Everyone else in this game is relatively low level, so this is going to be a pretty cool demonstration of two players trying to carry and five players doing their best. This map is uh, pretty unique in the fact that it has an absolute metric shitload of reclaim. There's 700 in the back in this corner. There's 300 here, 200 here, 200 here. It's, it's, there's, there's so much. There's, there's so much reclaim. As you can see, like it's like 9,000 something overall. And just in this little corner here, you have the, the 700, you have the 2,500. There's, the point is, there's there's so much reclaim on this map, and so being really aggressive with that is really important. You'll see here that I actually send out an early grave robber, and I mess up my build order, and I don't send out the early grunt to protect it, so I end up losing it after it gets some reclaim. Definitely a mistake to, to keep in mind. However, to restate, this uh, clinic is going to be mostly talking about tier 2 timing and unit composition, when I'm teching and why, and what I'm building once I do so. So let's go ahead and get into it. Okay. Pretty standard opener here, mex, mex, wind, wind. Now, there are two mexes here, but I'm really prioritizing getting the resbot out ASAP because it's way more than the uptime on these mexes. Getting this early grave robber out to start sucking up metal is such an incredibly big deal and uh, that it's, it's worth delaying the timing here. Again, instantly it's already paid for itself, just like that. He's got these really early rovers here to try to deny this, but I've already sucked up 200 metal. So this is already paid for itself already. And then unfortunately I do lose that guy. So that happens and this early vehicle harass from X Factor was really, really good. Definitely want to make sure I am uh, explaining how important that was. This time I protect my resbot, so <laughs> there's that. Now from here again, just continuing pretty standard stuff. I have a lot more metal than I normally would because I've sucked up like a thousand metal, literally. So even though my, my energy looks pretty low and it looks like I shouldn't be adding all of this, this metal income was very temporary. So I don't need to scale my economy much to spend it. Okay, blah, 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 building a little bit of wind, moving, moving forward. Again, this is not the focus. The uh, radar here is important. Here, I can go ahead and swap to the self view here. I have this forward res bot who's playing aggressively. He's going to be like healing these units and I'm protecting it, which is, is nice. Resurrecting this, playing aggressive and whatnot. Blah, blah, blah. Again, all of this is wonderful, but I'm not here to focus on this. Putting some nice pressure on them with the help of my teammate, uh, the Magenta player. Degunning, playing aggressive, etc., etc. Now, on this map, at the very beginning, just to mention, you need to be making grunts and stuff to control this space. However, pretty quickly, because of the choke points, it usually ends up devolving into some line wars, which is when you're going to want to start getting the thugs and the rocket bots. I uh, made another small mistake here in that my, my bot lab is rallying here and not here. I'd like to mention that I made the choice because I don't see a whole lot of pork to actually, instead of going vehicle lab, to go double bot lab. And I have this one cranking thugs and aggravators and a few grunts and grave robbers on repeat. And this one is just gonna be cranking grunts. I'm gonna use this to, to create pressure. Blah, 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 just getting all of this. And the reason I am going for this strategy is because I'm kind of smelling weakness. I see that he's greeting and not making it that many units. My radar is giving me information here, like the, the blue player, who is, I'm assuming is in this corner, is not making that many units, which is why I decided to go for this. Again, that's not the focus of this little clinic, so I'm just going to kind of brush over that. The biggest thing is I want to talk about Tier 2. Now, we're getting to the point where I'm going to be considering it very soon after a few things happen. In broad strokes, the reason that you would go T2 is that building T1 units is no longer efficient and conducive to winning. What that means is that if he has defenses that can be overwhelmed and I can take more space by just building more units, then I should just do that. The investment for the T2 lab is really, really high. 
And uh, while obviously going T2 is fantastic, it does a lot of things for you, it costs a lot of resources and time, and you have to give up a lot of space and opportunity cost of what you could be getting and doing and achieving without that. As you can see, I'm pushing forward. I have a dominant position. I've got Razbots, I've got Commander on the front, I've got space. I'm, I'm really chilling. However, what you're going to see here very soon is as we fight, blah, 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 taking the space, fighting, moving forward, healing, moving forward, healing, moving forward. Very good, normal, standard play from me here. I'm in a pretty commanding position. As you can see back home, I'm still just cranking units. Haven't even thought of going T2 at the moment because I don't need to. Making units is still helpful. I I'm still able to fight all of the things that you see here with what I have. Having more of this is still good. Now, from here, as you can see, what I've been doing has forced a response. I have forced out a lot of vehicles from Blue that he was not fielding previously. You know, I've got... I need to get an another radar further up, but uh, I saw that Blue didn't have that many units a few, a few minutes ago, and he was not able to push that hard. Uh, but now he's been fielding a lot of stuff, and so I can see that if I continue to just stream units in here, they're threatened. They have this choke point, it's closer to their base, and it's a losing battle if I just try to shove my way through here. And so pretty soon is when I'm going to be like, okay, I need to take stock, this isn't going to work. And so what you'll see here pretty soon is I want to actually set up a defensive perimeter here. I build a swarm turret, having a, you know, guys on the front is really, really helpful. Playing a little bit more careful with my commander. Pulling back. Again, I'm, I'm still playing pretty aggressively. And now that is the big turning point, okay? Is I lose my commander and I want to contest this reclaim, but my ability to push in here has been hampered because I've lost my commander, which is a really, really powerful asset. And so you could argue that that was a mistake, but I really just wanted to put the pressure on because I know that if I let Blue just tech for free, or if I don't put a lot of pressure on him, he's going to run away with the game. We can see right now that he uh, has a lot of converters, maybe even too many, but he had this at one point, so it's not as greedy as it looks. And he's going to end up scaling a lot of wind. If we look at total metal, he's doing very, very well for himself. But you have to keep in mind, he's also spent quite a lot of resources on all of those things. And so you'll see that his damage numbers are lower than mine because he's able to output less units than I am. Which is, you know, it's all part of the trade-off. Is He decided that he needed to play really greedy to carry this game, which again, he does. He does have to play greedy to an extent. When you're the top TS player in a lobby, especially when the, the TS is very, very varied, as you can see, like the quality of players is extremely varied in this game. And it is, to a degree, a battle between uh, me and, and X-Factor. Uh, uh, Milk is uh, not as highly rated as I am. The auto balance was turned off this game, so I am the highest TS in this lobby. It's misleading in case anyone was curious about that. So moving forward, I need to put on pressure. However, with his commander there and mine not there, you know, and losing a good chunk of my units, I still want to try to control this space. I still want to try to get... Uh, to move forward. However, I know that with his commander there, and with it being so close to his base, I just can't really contest that space anymore. And so, I reclaim both of my bot labs, and I kind of just hoping that what I have here, and him being scared to step out, is going to give me the space that I needed. All right. And so, with that, like I said, I ate both my bot labs, and uh, I make two important buildings here, is I make the energy storage, and I made the metal storage. Uh, and then after I didn't need the metal storage anymore, I ate the metal storage because it doesn't do anything for me after I use all that metal. Now with this, I am holding back, right? I definitely have units here. I've got vision of all of this and I'm controlling this metal. I wish that I had gotten a res bot or two out before I reclaimed my lab. That was definitely a mistake because if I could get any of this, that would be really, really nice. I think I actually thought that I had one and I just didn't. Now. He's afraid to push out because he doesn't know what I have. And he was being forced into a corner only a moment ago. He's got radar, I assume. Uh, does he not? Okay, this does seal this unit. So he still sees units, right? He still sees a threat. And he's being contained. And I'm trying to use this time to attack. 
now. I don't want to like hard hard commit to teching because this is too small of a map, too small of a teams to just sit there and you know build aphises all day. What I want to do is I want to get an advantage as fast as humanly possible and I actually try to help out my team by giving a con to this guy. I say buy T2, but he doesn't end up paying for it. But uh, if you hit T2 earlier than your teammates and it's feasible to give them uh, a T2 con, especially on like these, these smaller mouths, that can be really, really helpful. There's an argument for not doing it and playing greedy, but I was feeling optimistic. So yeah, I give out that con in a moment. And unfortunately, he doesn't grab it for a while, which is the, the danger. You spend the money and then it just sits there. So as you can see, I'm trying to monitor the front whenever I can because I don't want him to get out, but I do want to tech. If we look here, he has not teched yet because we have been putting the pressure on him. And this is a really, really important thing to note is that his teammates, none, no one on his team has managed to tech yet. I will say I was kind of bamboozled that uh, Orange was able to, to tech here, but he kind of wasn't contested. He was all the way up here, so more power to him. So over here, the first thing I did was I made these constructor bots. And then the first offensive units that I build is I'm going to go ahead and build a radar bot. And then I'm going to try to get some sumos out because those are going to be the best units to prevent him from running out of his base. And then you'll see I set up a, a rotation here. I'm going to make two sumos, two fiends, five Sheldons, a Twitcher, and a radar bot. This is what I have on repeat. The Sheldons are to obviously, you know, to, to shell things and to fight. And then the Sumos are to protect the Sheldons. And the Fiends are to help, A, catch anyone trying to run by my units. And to support the Sumos in case he tries to throw a lot of units at me. Fiends are really, really high damage. But they're not very tanky is the issue with them. So, yeah, there's my composition there. I started cranking out those units. There is an argument that I should have held off on making these units and tried to finish my mexes first. However, I, it's been so long since I had built any units that I really wanted to try to start putting on some pressure. As you can see, he's trying to get out, which I don't really want that because I'd prefer it if he stayed in his, his cave. I send these twitchers to the front very early to try to repair and reclaim as much as I can. And uh, I definitely get the pressure put on me here when I notice that he's trying to push out. I need to get my units to the front ASAP. I didn't have a rally because I'm a silly goofus head, but I'll fix that pretty soon. Now again, let's let's see how the unit composition ends up playing out here. I send in these fiends to try to do some damage, self-destruct them, which normally is good, but I didn't get them quite close enough sending in these guys a little preemptively it was not fully ideal this ends up getting a little sketchy here so i'm very grateful to stoat who ends up rotating behind here and helping me out but i would definitely mention sheldons are amazing for like sieging however this might be a lower number of sheldons than you're accustomed to seeing in most most like tier two balls and rotations but they are absolutely atrocious dps for the metal they do no damage and they're very very expensive and so I was actually, it was very, very bad that I wasted my early sumos and, and uh, pyros because now that I have these guys, they're unprotected. I should have been playing more careful with those. I get lucky uh, in a big way in that when he overextends, Stoat's going to come through here and rotate and I'm just barely going to survive this little exchange here. Yeah, I tried desperately to build one of these pop-ups, but it does not go up in time. This definitely was sketchy and could have gone much worse. If I didn't have my sumo when I got it, this would have been an absolute disaster. So yeah, thank you to Stoat there. And now we're in a situation where I'm T2. He probably just recently, yep, just recently went T2. He doesn't have any of his mexes up or anything. And man, he is just scaling like an insane person. He's trying so hard to make as much metal as he can. Now, it is important to note that I am actually not that far behind in metal on him, and I have spent much less resources on production, and that's because I'm getting more reclaim than him. The strategy that I'm doing is involving more reclaim and more combat, and he's trying to just scale, 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 scale in his corner, which, I mean, it's a different strategy. Uh, I am not a huge fan of doing this. I think that it's really, really risky, and that it's a better idea to try to contest more. You know, if I had pushed any harder or been played a little bit better, I could put him in a really, really bad spot right now. Like if I had played better with those sumos, 
he does not have very much here to stop me, like these forced outs and some Janices and stuff. If I had played that a little cleaner, he'd be in a really bad spot right now. And so we move forward. I got these Twitchers. I end up building this to try to make myself some space so that I can control all of this metal. There's so much reclaim here, and so I really want to control it. And this allows me to do just that. Ends up coming in clutch a little bit later. So yes, yeah, so I'm, I'm reclaiming. I rebuild my T1 bot lab to start resurrecting some stuff and healing. It's another really, really important thing to think about. And now I need to start slowly walking forward. Okay, blah, 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 blah. As you can see, I'm working my way forward. I've got this nice mix of units. I can deal with stuff very nicely. And so, a small bit to mention here is that the Augur, this uh, Cortex radar bot, has a bonkers LOS of 925, which is why I'm chilling over here and I can see all of this stuff. The, the vision range on this unit is this. It's gigantic. That allows me to very comfortably shell and now I'm going to be moving up my Sumos and my Pyros to stand in front of my Sheldons. I have just enough Sheldons to deal damage, and then I want other units to protect them. The thing that it is most vulnerable to is just getting run at, which I would like to avoid. Healing my units with my Resbonds, that's really, really strong. They're getting shoved back, and there's not a ton they can do without Tier 2. Because with, with, with this proper composition, this is just a really, really strong kind of deal here now what you're going to see is he has a pretty significant lead as far as like the amount of combat metal that he's got going on here like i've got like the three and a half and this is like seven right this is also a fair amount but these hounds they trade into sheldon's pretty well if they're allowed to just run at them but the sheldon's outrange them and so in order to make this good for me i need uh, I probably needed actually more sumos and more pyros because I need to protect these guys. The damage on these sumos, or sorry, hounds, is about the same DPS. It's it's a little bit higher because if we look at the damage there, it's the uh, the ground to ground AOE plasma cannon is that day 80 DPS versus these, which have that 65 DPS. So not only do these deal more damage, they're cheaper and faster. So hounds beat Sheldon's if they can get in range and run at them because again, these have 850 range. These have 650 range, but these are slower and, uh, like I said, deal, deal less damage and cost more money. So you need, 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 need to back them up. You can mass hounds pretty well, but Sheldons need protection. If you do not have protection for Sheldons, they get shit on by a lot of stuff. See, so yeah, I try to back those up, and I try to keep those sumos in, in, the, in the thick of it there, and it goes pretty well. I definitely lost, you know, some of my Sheldons, but it was at great cost to him as well. Got the resbot ball. I want to get in there and I want to start resing stuff as soon as possible. Picking stuff up. There you, there you see that happening. Res, 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 res. Control the space. And now, even though he's going to have more metal than me now, because again, by this point, he's just been scaling like an insane person. It's, it's an interesting strategy, but I have just been controlling a lot more space than him and putting a lot of pressure on. And all of the resurrecting I'm doing is offsetting that metal advantage. Only reason he's not dead is because, you know, he, we're fighting into a choke. We're fighting into where his reinforcements are. I have, you know, X number of units that are just on the way. And I'm, I'm, I'm pretty happy with the position that I'm in. The blah, blah, blah. I'll do all of this. I needed to fix my... Uh, the spot that I was rallying to. And yeah, we're just, we're working our way forward. Uh, I think I needed to build a, a, a radar at some point. Would have been nice to do. And then my Twitchers can, can be rebuilding these mexes. Another big thing I'd like to point out that I do here is that I sent this T2 builder with some Twitchers forward. And he's going to be building these mexes. He ends up building a bulwark and some other stuff for me as well. Really, really useful. You want to make sure you're taking full advantage of all of the space that you're creating. That was a good bomb, com bomb by, the by Theologic. I must have been looking away or something. So well played on his part. Blah, blah, blah. Wind is really low. Feels bad, but happens. So here is where uh, it's a bit awkward. That com bomb was really, really good. And it killed a lot of my forces. And so he is rightfully taking the time to... Or the space, rather, to move up. 
Now, I've got this handy dandy little spy bot here, which is really nice. And it is, uh, I think, I turned off the cloak. Did I forget to recloak it? No, it's, it's, it's cloaked. This is going to end up coming into play here pretty nicely, because as he pushes up, boom, I start shooting at him with that persecutor. And that is a big part of the reason why this didn't go really, really bad. Thank you, persecutor, 10 kills. Okay. Blah, blah, blah. I immediately move back forward. I want to start resurrecting these things and taking advantage of that. Stout does a great job of mopping up these units. From here, I take the space that I just got to build a fusion and a single converter to just try to up my, my output however I can. I built some anti-air. Blah, blah, blah. Moving back in. And I keep just doing the same thing because this, uh, this unit composition is strong. It's allowing me to take and hold space, and I'm going to keep this resbot ball going and keep these twitchers rebuilding mexes whenever I can. This has been pretty straightforward. Now, I do end up deciding to build this thing to help contest the the bulls and the, what's it called? The, the hounds. This has the same range as hounds. If they are not playing with snipers, Mammoths are extremely, extremely good. They have a lot of health, and they trade very well into most things. You just need to back them up. That's what I'm going to try to do. Now, if I remember, I messed up, and I <laughs> pulled these back, and I let my Mammoth die. Don't uh, do not do that, but uh, you know, we, we all make mistakes. I think I tried to grab them all and pull them back, and then I missed the boy. Whoopsie. Okay, so all of that's happening. And now I want to keep continuing to control more space and there's a lot of mexes in this area enter bulwark really good unit so it's gonna be very good at holding this space moving forward blah 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 i think i build a second fusion here yeah so i, I I'm, I'm already holding a lot of space and i know that with tier two defenses it's gonna be really, really hard to push through here and so what i want to do is i want to take the space that i have and i want to start ecoing because if i just try to punch through he can be a lot more efficient than I am with his production. See, he's already starting to scale out of control. Uh, I He's doing a better job at making resources than I am, for sure. And if I just keep throwing resources at this, in theory, he should be able to build static defenses that made it really, make it really hard for me to push. I don't have the information that he doesn't have any. I just kind of made the assumption that it would be hard to push him. And so I want to try to take advantage of what I have here. Now... Red has a pretty good bombing run there. He's okay. Blah, blah, blah. I'm pushing up. Resurrected units for the win. Now, from here, uh, luckily, my team has been winning on the other side as I have kept their top player extremely occupied. And, yeah. I mean, that kind of sums up most of what was happening here is you know we we fought and i took this space and from here uh the game is going to crumble pretty fast not much else is going to happen definitely were some things you know both players could have done better but this was a very good example of a solid t2 timing both from blue and myself and it works out very well there you have it uh cool so from here, I will take take questions. Do you always eat your uh, tier one when you're uh, when you're going T two? Yeah, uh, is that like just a common place practice? Or most is it of the time. Situational? So let me put it this way: the build power cost on these factories is really low, and the energy cost is really low. And so if you want to rebuild it, it's super easy to do that. And so I would much rather use the metal to do something rather than just have this factory sit there. Like, it, it's really, really not beneficial for me to have a factory sitting there not being used. And if I'm in the process of transitioning to T2, most of the time I'd rather spend that metal on something T2 related. There are times where you need to keep pushing and pumping T1 units, but I'd say it's not very common. Usually you want to try to do one thing at a time and commit to doing that thing. Does that answer your question? Oh yeah, no. Yeah. Okay, fantastic. I was just right. I was just hoping someone else would ask. A Anyone question. else? Uh, I actually have a question regarding energy production. Um, 
Sure. I'm very much of a noob, so I probably get this wrong, but I can see that Stau, the pink one, has a lot of uh, solar uh, uh -huh. energy panels, and you have a lot of wind turbines. Like, how did the two of you compare? Did he have problems with energy and you didn't, or was it the other way around, or it didn't really matter? Okay, so strictly speaking, uh, because of how the the wind variance works map to map, it, it does depend. But on this map specifically, the low end is 4, high end is 19. When it comes to metal efficiency, if you hover over here, it says right here, Armada is 5 and Cortex is 6. That is the cutoff to when a wind is not as good as solar, when it's below that number. On this map, 4 to 19, the wind is fantastic. So you should really only build solar panels at the very, very beginning of the game when the wind is very low. Uh, if the wind uh, is very I low, see. right? And so I, I built, see, I, see. I think I did build a solar at some point and then I reclaimed it because as I scale and I get storage, it's just not efficient. So this guy has, I can show you right here, if we hover all of this, uh, these resources, this is 3,300 metal and 20,000 energy to produce 540. And then if we go over here, let's see how much it takes for me to get to 540. Uh, wind is very low right now. Wind is very low right now, that's a good point. Let's try to skip ahead when it's not as atrocious. Yeah, if pretty if that happens. It's stuck on four. Move, win, damn it. There you go. Okay, so this is much more of an average number. So if we look at this. Uh, so yeah, we're at 540 and look at the resource difference. For like two thirds of the metal and right. a, a third of the energy, I have the same thing that he does. With uh, pretty average win. I, I do just want to say one thing that the numbers on that aren't a hard rule to follow on a lot of maps with relatively low average wind like you, we're talking here nine average wind you will see cortex players just go full solar anyway because the variance usually isn't worth uh the efficiency you could be stuck at very low wind for long periods of time Anyway, it depends. That's not the topic of this of this video, so I want to try to brush past that. Happy to answer that question. Yeah, sorry. Time. Just, no, 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 it's fine. I just I, I don't want to get stuck I on that. I just saw the thing any, and I wasn't. Any questions regarding the T two timing or the unit compositions? Mm, not the timing. Sweet. Then I'm gonna go ahead and end the stream, and this can uh, be a standalone a quick, video. Quick question. Oh, what's up? Porter has a question about the, about the unit composition. Um, you keep you keep hammering the point of you know try to do one thing at a time, but I was curious. Is it worth integrating some air late game of ST2, be it a tier 1 air into a tier 2, um, you know, your main unit composition, be it as a scout or as some sort of a, I don't know, bomber that would catch them off guard? Yeah, I mean, through. diversifying and, 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 and tacking into air and things to support your units is absolutely a great idea. I mean, it depends on what you mean by late game. If what I was doing at this point didn't end up winning, then probably around the 28, 29 minute mark in this game would have been a great time to start thinking about A, adding on tier three, or B, adding on air, for sure. Uh, definitely, definitely a consideration, for sure. In this game, it might have been hard because Blue did have fighters up. Mm -hmm. That's true, he did have fighters up. Now, uh, now, they were tier one fighters, and so I definitely could have thought about adding on tier two fighters. You know, uh, there's there, there 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 are answers is the point. You know, and I can also contest from the ground because like these manticores are obviously going to be very effective against fighters. Any other questions? Um, so, was there any distinct reason why you don't weave in or you didn't weave in any uh, radar jammers? Uh, yes, they cost a lot of energy to maintain. Like, just having them on costs a lot of energy. I think it's like 100 energy per second. Uh, and... Thank you. What? Wait, really? It's how much? It's, eight, it, it's 80 energy. 80, 80 per energy per jammer. second. Is that for both both races? A single jammer for the... Yeah. Uh, I don't know if it's the same for the vehicle, but I know it's for the, uh, for the bolts. Uh, yeah, because it's, it's a lot. Does anyone have a jammer that I can look at? Uh... I actually checked yesterday. The bots is 80, but I did not okay. check vehicles. Yeah, here, here's one. So yeah, 80 right there. And this static one is 25. Um, I, well, I they're wanted they're to expensive. Say, I want to say it's 30, but then, yeah, it's the, this jammer, the stationary jammer. So. Yeah, I mean that's not that's not nothing. That's you know that's more than a solar that can provide. So I mean it's it's not trivial. 
And uh, I would have said to get one static tier one jammer up near the front just to hide your reinforcements. There's an argument for it. it. Another reason why I was less concerned about jamming is because I have Sheldons and he has Hounds, and so I outrange him anyway, right? And so it's less important that I jam if I'm just not even in range. Fair. Yeah. Now, when it's when it's Sheldons versus Sheldons or Hounds versus Hounds, the vision war is a lot more important, and you know, like targeting down their jammers and all that is like a whole other thing. Uh, that is a very, very important and very valid component of the the fight, but it is not one that came up during this. So yeah, it, it can be very funny when you're doing the mirror uh, to incorporate like a sniper and try to snipe the jammer. <laughs> uh, that can be pretty funny. Um. I will so say, though, that you probably could have won this game a lot earlier had you made an earlier spy bot. Potentially, yes. I, I, I do agree that I, I underused spy bots this, this game because I was low on energy at, uh, at the time that I was considering them. It was kind of funny, actually. I made the spy bot and then I turned it off to walk it down here because I was so low on energy. Because <laughs> I mean, the spy bot costs 100 energy while it's moving. Uh, just to move it? I think I have my spy bots default off. I'll just turn them on when I want to use them. Yeah, I think I might want to change that myself, and I can take the opportunity to, to show you guys how to do that right now. It's in... Uh, is it in game? I yeah, think it's in the game, yeah, cloak yeah. units. So if we go down here, it's the, the specter and the ghost. I can go ahead and turn that off right here. You can also do it for, like, gremlins and the uh, jammers. So well. humorously, gremlins cost a fraction of the energy of the specters and ghosts. I don't understand this from a balancing perspective. Maybe there's a reason, but the the spy bot ghost, the the the, the uh, bot spy bots cost I think 20 to stand still and 100 to move, and the gremlin tanks cost 5 to stand still and 20 to move. They are way way energy cheaper. I I will say though that the tier 1 jammer is probably a good idea to have default off. Because yeah. people will just build a few of those in tier one and then forget to turn them off. And then each of those is like 25 energy drain. You know, that's fair. It's probably a good thing to turn off. Good point. And uh, I mean, if your yeah. jammer's getting pushed, it's it's very simple to just hit the cloak button. True, true. Okay, well, yeah, there you have it. I think I will wrap up this video now. And again, I can take questions that are not related as soon as I end the stream. I just want to keep the recording kind of nice and tight, yeah? Turn off this and stop streaming.